did you, how do you go about learning music from a degree? Because I, I always thought in terms of arts in general, it's all of a, it's a um, personal thing. You know what? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you're going to use this in your podcast, but when I was doing it, I watched a, a little little thing, a little video from XXX Tentacion, right? Mm. And he was saying, like, if you need to be a lawyer or a doctor, then yes, by all, or an engineer, then yeah, by all means, go to university. But for something like music, you don't need it. You just need to pump out content and then the people start listening to you. Yeah. Now, this, I think I came across this during my first or second year. And I was just like, oh, he's so, he's actually right. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but he's actually right. Because what can, because what, what, what really did university teach me? I mean, in my first year, I came in thinking that the production course would be, I mean, this is not to throw any shade at my university. It was a great university, but I'm just saying mm. how I saw it. The production course was, I thought that we'd be taken from like level one, essentially, like everyone would be level one. And then we would just all work together. Okay. We all knew new steps at the same time. But you come in, right? And then everyone's on this all different levels. Mm. Just, yeah. So I'd be there at level one, essentially. And then there'll be guys in the class who just, who just know so much. And I'd be there. And I, then I get sort of a bit, oh, what's the word? A bit put off, like, I guess. Yeah, like demotivated. Yeah. Because then, for example, that we'd have these um, um, course feedbacks. Okay. So we'd have to like make an assignment, um, make a beat or something, and then show it up at the end of like the semester, at the end of the term, just to get some feedback on it. Mm -hmm. And then I did it for I did it the first time, thinking, oh, it'll be all right, you know. Turn up and everyone's got these amazing tracks, and I'm there like mine is so basic, so that the next time the next time these assessments came around, I just didn't show up. Damn. No, that's how off-putting it it came to me, and I was like, and I beat myself up over it. Mm. I mean, now now I like to think I'm a good producer. I mean, you've you've heard them, yeah. Yeah, to me, your tracks are like next level. <laughs> <laughs> but like at, at that time, and this was only three years ago, two years ago. Yeah, I was just so off-put. I mean, this would be yeah. I'd be like, ah. Oh. So I didn't like not turning up for the lecture mm. because I've already got to travel an hour and a half to get to the uni anyway. Yeah. So just to not, just to do all that tra traveling, just to not go to what it's to, to the point of, of of a university, just just drove me insane, man. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I, I mean, the third really... year in, in third year it was it was easier for me because it was more my fault at that point. I was more. I was more focused on doing like film and game music anyway. Okay. And, and luckily enough, that's what the freaking, um, sorry for saying freaking, I don't know if that's part of it. I don't know. I don't, uh, and lucky enough, that was part of, of the main um, modules composing for media. And I was, I, I was quite happy about that. And I was able to show off my talent there, but just the first two years, it was a, oh, it hurt. Yeah, it hurt. That's nuts, man. <clears throat> I can kind of relate because, like, in my degree, we do a lot of programming as well. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, my fault, like, you get there, everyone's kind of the same level. They've done maths before, but no one's really done computing. So we just work together collaboratively, get better week by week. But you yeah. get there, and I'm like this one guy that's never seen a computer before. And then there are these kids that have been coding since they were five years old. And it's like, <laughs> like, what, what's hell? like what is this language? <laughs> 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 like, we had a project to do for our first, the first time we, we learned. And the game I made was literally like you press the arrow keys to move and you eat like food on the screen. <laughs> well, so it's kind of like, you know, like Google, the Google dinosaur game. We got to just jump over the cactus. And yeah, it might as well be. Because <laughs> <very good. laughs> to me, it's like first principles is just make it work. Right. And to yeah, me, I was yeah, proud yeah. at the time. But then when I saw everyone else's, it's like flying spaceships and stuff. And you move the mouse and you can do 360s. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> do you remember in um, ICT class when we did scratch did i didn't scratch? do ICT. no we were we had to do ict oh, oh was that yes, was that would 
No, that, no, yeah, we must have Scratch. It was like a, it was it was a programming thing, but not as. No, as Scratch long. is the first language to learn at uni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you compare that to what, like, what would you do? C plus Python. Uh, first year we did Scratch and then Python in first term, and then yeah. C and Java second term. It's a massive difference between Scratch and any other other languages, isn't it? <laughs> Literally, like wh- when I came to submit in my coursework, I did mine completely in Scratch, and someone else did theirs in like C sharp with Unity, the, the engine. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> 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 this just isn't fair. <laughs> like, well, I've got an F. <laughs> <laughs> It's like for me, in my first year, I was demotivated as well. I was like, I can't compete with that. Even if I dedicate my whole time to doing this one unit, that's only one out of like 20. Yeah. But then I guess in second year, it was more like, if there are people that are actually good at coding, it's, I might as well use this time to network with them and find out how they got so good and learn from them, right? And I yeah, was exactly, like, exactly. It, I kind of turned it into motivation. Like, did you find that in uni as well? In your, I, I, guess, I really wanted to, I just wanted to beat them. I was like, no, I've got to. I've got to do it, but then each time I would showcase a friend, uh, a, a, um, someone from my class, or even my, t- or even the lecturer, what I did, mm. they'd be like, "Oh, you should do this, 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 and this," and then I'd listen to someone else's work. Um, but that, well, if you just compare our, the the two of ours, it's just how do you do this? And as I as, as I can like see the screen, like I can see what's happening in the track, mm. the product rather. I'm like, oh, that looks so simple, but why is it when I do it, it just doesn't, s- no. Why, why can't I do that? I mean, I can now, but. Yeah, yeah. A trial and error, patience sort of thing. Yeah, I guess it's a learning process, isn't it? Yeah. That's so nuts, though. Do you feel like, because in my head, when I think about it, there's no real way to determine what's, what two songs are better other than like what sounds best. Like, yeah. How are you graded in that sense? Or is it just like getting across a clap and you ever get a louder clap? Well, is, uh, that's, that's, the thing, that's the thing with the art, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> art is subjective. So. <laughs> um, well, no, so, so to get graded, you'd have like criteria to meet. Mm. Like you got to do, I don't know, add, make up a drum loop using just, you know, this, is, this isn't true, but the, so Logic, Logic Pro, um, a software for making music yeah has a thing where it's called drummer where you can just fiddle up fiddle up, fiddle with a few um settings and then it has a whole different drum beat each time okay so one what so for example criteria would be use drummer in your track give it a gamey feel using a synth that fits the genre etc etc mm. so if it fits that criteria then you then you've gotten the mark so in essence, it could sound really bad and you could still pass, but it just, to me, I want it to sound as good <laughs> as anyone else's, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's nuts. I mean, is that, is that anything that happened in anything similar for coding? So for, for coding, it was... Because most of our projects were making games, it was pretty much the same as yours, I guess, but it was more technical. Right. Like, there are so many specific things you can do in coding, like make a for loop. And if... You, Dude, we had three main marking categories, like the quality of code in terms of like the technical content, um, the appearance, so like how, well, I guess how nice the code looks, which is hard for me to, <laughs> to think about as code. And yeah, then yeah. it's like, it was called like a wow factor or like a unique selling point thing. So because obviously my game was a simple, like moving arrow keys, I got a very low score for that one, but someone else who did a sci-fi thing got a really high score. So... And for that category, it's kind of peak because there's no real way to rate it objectively. Yeah. But for the other three, you know, appearance kind of makes sense. I feel uh, like for you, if you were to, for someone who'd never came across coding before, just, just in itself of making something move with arrow keys is a, is a big step forward. So I think they should have marked you a bit, just a bit higher, you know, just be, be, be a bit more lenient. You know? But that yeah, wouldn't be fair yeah. on the others, I suppose. <laughs> Absolutely. But I guess in some capacity, I understand why I didn't get. Well, I say that the unique score one was only a small, that was like 10% of the overall grade. So it's not that big a deal. Yeah. But then it is deep how someone who's just practiced harder is going to get a higher score. But then that's kind of how, <laughs> how life works, isn't it? Yeah. 